So I wanted to show a quick demo of a <clears throat> mono game hot loading system I've been working on. Uh, while I've done this with mono game, it should work with any C sharp based uh, game development or application development you do. Maybe even Unity. I don't know if it'll work with Unity for sure. So the idea is <clears throat> um, that it's sometimes useful to be able to change your game logic code while your game is running. So for instance, um, I have a little demo game here. You can move around and jump with your character. Um, <clears throat> and for, for a lot of game development stuff, you kind of need to experiment with things. So this movement speed feels too fast, say for instance, and you want to try a different movement speed. So I could go in here into my uh, uh, game, uh, game logic project, game logic DLL, and I can just change this movement speed and <clears throat> build that project. <clears throat> and that change takes effect. So that's kind of cool, but it doesn't seem like that big of a deal because you can do that, um, say, by just having a configuration file. Um, or if you've used Unity, you can change these sorts of things. Uh, you change your variables in the editor and get a similar effect. Uh, one difference is <clears throat> you can do this even with constants. So you can get uh, performance advantage um, by declaring things that are constant as const. So the compiler can, can do smarter things with that knowledge. Uh, but also you can do more than just change variables here. You can change the flow of your code. Uh, like right now, you can jump and move at the same time. Right? You can change your direction in midair. Uh, let's say we wanted to change that and only allow uh, one thing at a time. So we can change our logic here and then build that. And now that applies. We can't, can't jump if we're moving, can't move. Yeah. I guess we can, we can move while we're jumping, but we can't jump while we're moving because we've changed that logic. So basically anything uh, you want in your update logic, uh, you can change. You can change your physics, your game logic, scoring system, anything you want. Um, the only thing, the only limitation you have is that these changes are getting passed in eventually uh, through your game state. So if you were to change the layout of your game state, then you would need to, to rebuild everything. Um, another important thing to keep in mind here is this is not restarting the whole game. Right, so I'm going to put this guy to the far left of the screen, right? And if I change something, <clears throat> say change the jump speed, rebuild, you notice it doesn't restart the state. It maintains the state it had previously, uh, but now with the new logic. So now the jump speed is faster. And that's important because you can imagine you're working on something, uh, say, on the third level of your game. You want to tweak something there. You don't want to have to restart the whole game from scratch, recompile it get through the start menu and get back to where you were or load a save game. You can skip all that stuff and then really experiment with things, uh, you know, really quickly. Uh, we can just hit change something, build it, and now we have a new slower move speed. <clears throat> um, another feature I've got in here is the ability to hot load shaders. So this little sprite here has got a shader applied to it. Um, it's this effect right here. Um, so this little hot loader system, you can change the shader. And as soon as you hit save, there's a file watcher watching it every, every uh, loop through the game. And it, it changes it, right? So we can make it blue. Do whatever you want to the shader. It'll apply it as soon as that's applied. And so a quick review of how all this works. So there's two aspects. First is the game logic DLL hot loading, and the second is the shader hot loading. So uh, I have a hot loader class here. <clears throat> and basically, we do a lot of um, preparation of getting the uh, paths figured out. So you get your current executing directory figured out. Uh, the solution path is five levels down from that. Um, when we first start up, we load the game logic DLL. And we do that <clears throat> by calling assembly.load. And then we get an instance of the game logic class, which we call through a proxy class, which implements this interface. And you can make this interface have more, you know, whatever functions you want. 
and <clears throat> it's able to um, take in the keyboard state from the model game at game time and return an updated game state. And we also have a set state function, which is used when you uh, rebuild the game logic. You need to give it the state that you previously had. Otherwise, everything will start over. So that's the basic idea for the DLL. Oh, then we, we <coughs> every time through the loop, we check to see if the DLL has been updated, if the update time has changed. And if it has, then we load the new one and set the current state. Uh, a limitation with this approach is that whenever you load a new DLL, it's just adding it to the current app domain. So it is a memory leak. Um, it's a deep, this is a debug only tool, so that should be okay for some uses, but if your game logic was like a gigabyte in size, um, you wouldn't be able to do many iterations before you ran out of memory. Um, the only way I know to work around that for now is you can make a separate app domain, load your DLL into that, but then the problem is that communicating um, say your game state or other things back and forth from uh, the platform layer to your game logic DLL would involve uh, serialization. Uh, and since a lot of model game things aren't serializable, it becomes a real pain. Uh, but that's something to think about. Um, shaders is the same approach. Um, we keep a hash table of all the shaders uh, in the game or a dictionary of all the shaders in the game. And each time through the game loop, we check to see if any of the shaders have been updated and then recompile them. Uh, we have to use Model Games Shader Compiler to do this. So we, <coughs> we call that process, we compile it. And then the next time through, when you load the shader, you're getting, you're getting the new one from the uh, shader dictionary. Um, <coughs> and I've set the shader stuff up to be debug only. So when you do a release build, um, you're not going through any of this process. This code is not even included in the build. So that's just a short overview and hopefully you find it useful.